Hey, what's up, everybody? So what is audio rubber banding? Audio rubber banding is a way to adjust the volume, the clip gain, using these keyframes. It looks, I guess, a little bit like a rubber band, right? I don't know. Thank you. So the, so the volume of that music goes up, it goes down. I can bring it all the way down and bring it all the way up. You're welcome. Oh, no. And this is a better way, quicker way, to adjust the volume of audio rather than using the audio mixers. What you will see some uh, editors do, if they wanted the music to go up right here, what they'll do is make an ad edit, and then they'll raise the gain in the mixer of track seven, and then they'll put a dissolve here to smooth it out, and they have to render it. Oh no, thank you. Right, so that to me is the really slow way of doing it. The audio rubber banding much faster. Keyframe, keyframe, up. Well, you're welcome. Oh no, thank you. And you have much more flexibility when you do it this way. So, what are the things you need to have before you even can think about doing audio rubber banding? You need to have three things selected. This button over here, underneath the smart tools, it's called keyframe. You need to have this highlighted. You cannot do anything with audio rubber banding without having this highlighted. You also need to be in audio data. You need to have volume selected. So what's going to happen here? Let's find. Uh, okay. So this one. Tiffany had right. It went up. It went down with uh, somebody talking in the VO. Now, if I take off this audio data volume, what you're going to see is this little keyframe right here. If you ever borrow a sequence from somebody else and like, what the heck is that? Somebody was audio rubber banding using keyframes in the audio, but you do not have the audio data volume selected, so you can't really see it. So audio volume data selected, that's the second one. And the third thing is your tracks need to be big enough, your audio tracks. If you, if you were to control K or for some reason have them really small, if I hit control K a million times, you're going to see the tracks are too small. You can't keyframe uh, average like a, there's not enough room for even for me to see the keyframe. So just something to think about there. So you have those three things selected. You can keyframe audio now to your heart's content. Let's go back to that music at the end here. Imagine that I wanted to lift the audio and then I wanted it to go down. Right. So that's. Oh, no, no. Thank you. Okay, and the coolest thing about keyframing is holding a keyframe, having it selected, and hitting Alt. So that means I can drag it right or left. So now, thank you. Right, really quick dissolve out or long oh, dissolve out. And this is so much better than than imagine if you just wanted to dissolve out the, the music in this piece, and instead I, ha I hit 35 frame dissolve. Think about that. I have to do all that. I have to add it. I also have to render it, right? And then if I wanted to change it to longer, I'd have to render that too. So think about how awesome this is, this keyframing, this rubber banding. Awesome. You can adjust it so quick, no renders. Okay, so that's one of the greatest ways to use rubber banding. But obviously, the main way people use rubber banding is so you can see here somebody did this already. And let me put on the waveform here. You can see there's 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 Has there's never cheated on her. There's a reaction, and we want to lower this crowd reaction because we want to be able to hear the VO. And in that case, you're going to want four keyframes, right? So anytime you get a keyframe, you can shift click to hold them multiple keyframes right here so I clicked all eight I'm gonna delete them so now right it's way too loud so what are we gonna do we're gonna set some keyframes here set one beforehand one right where it starts run right one right where it ends and one right after so now if I bring these two in the middle down by doing that I'm gonna click an in and out and I'm gonna select any one of them and now has never cheated on her See that? Has never cheated on her. You could do the same thing, obviously going up. We wouldn't do it in this case, but think if you, if for some reason, you wanted to bring your your not sound up here. Right. So I'm just using those two, and the way you can do that is in and out. So the same thing. I'm going to, if I just want to do these, this one, I'm going to go in and out. 
Now, somebody might be saying, well, how did I get this off? You have to sometimes deselect tracks. And that's a way to deselect the selection you have here. Because Avid's gets a little quirky with these. And even quirky to the point where I think some people give up on rubber banding. But that's a huge mistake for time-wise, for drinking beer. More time to drink beer if you stick with it. Okay, so now I have this clip. Can't hear the VO because the audio is too loud. So he says, and now I'm going to set four keyframes and I'm going to bring down the middle two, right? Over here, in theory, because it just cuts on, I could set a keyframe so it dissolves up. He's paid other women for. Okay, way too low. And this is where I go up and down. You can actually see, and you want to make sure you have all selected there, you can actually see what the volume is down here whatever you have clicked you could look and see where you're going with the dbs here minus nine minus 14.7 minus 20.8 um when i'm working on television really quick stuff i don't really obsess about it i'm just worried about my ear if i was doing like a trailer documentary for somebody trying to win a festival or award i would go in and do that much smoother okay but he's paid other women for sex as long as it's smooth enough, it's close enough, right? You can go up and down. He's paid other women for... A little too low. You can't hear the crowd noise at all. I keep losing this 3-4. Right? So you want to make sure you have all your tracks selected. He's paid other women for sex. And even you... So, like I said, a couple of things, it, it does, so that does work fine. It does get quirky sometimes. You need to shut down, restart, um, ch change out of the project, put in a new sequence, put the sequence back in. It will sort of, like, get funky, a little buggy, I would say, with the rubber banding. But don't let that be enough to stop you. All right, so last thing about the rubber banding, coolest thing. Imagine if you wanted to, I don't know, all the music in your whole piece was too loud you wanted it to lower it all you could go in and 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 set something in the audio mixing and then put set you know set pan by track or set level on track i should say i don't do it that way i think it's much easier to just go through and make a keyframe on every clip right so i made a keyframe on all of these music tracks and now with the in and out selected i can go up or down I can bring it all down minus 6 dB. I can bring it all up 4 dB. Same thing with the uh, VO. Say you had, the, these were all bytes from an interview. Uh, I'll use these here. Say these were all bytes from an interview. You just go through, slam through, hit keyframes on all of them, mark an in to out, and now you can boost it all just that quickly by four frames. Hopefully that saves you a lot of time when you're working with audio. More time so you can drink beer. That's what this channel is all about. AvidBeer.com. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.